Welcome students. This is my rhetoric lecture part two. And remember here when I use the term rhetoric, what I mean is effective communication. The first term that we used or that we learned about was audience. And I talked a little bit about your intended audience and your actual audience. Uh, here I'm going to talk about context. It kind of means the same thing as purpose. So what purpose or context are you um, communicating with someone? So the context or purpose is the setting, circumstance, or discourse in which an action, an utterance, or an expression occurs. Remember, this could be in writing, it could be in television, um, it could be in music, any kind of medium that someone else um, receives that's given by someone else, you know, I would consider that rhetoric. So when I talk about context or purpose, the telling your family that the house is on fire is going to be a diff very different context than telling them that you need to use the computer. So hopefully you're not going to express these ideas in the same exact manner. Okay, our third key term is ethos. And ethos can refer to any of the following. Either the credibility of the speaker or the writer or the source that's being presented. So let's say I do some research and I am presenting a source in my research paper, that also would be considered ethos. And then it could be based on either the character or the credentials of either myself as the speaker or writer or as my source, uh, maybe like a doctor or a scientist or something. So ethos is your credibility based on ethics and or credentials. So of course ethics is, you know, Kind of equal to morals it's right and wrong and then credentials is maybe doctors or if you have a, a certain degree in another field maybe you are a zoologist then of course people are going to trust you um, when you say something about animals Okay, pathos is another pretty big key term. Some people say pathos. I'm not even sure which is ac accurate. I say pathos. Um, it's an emotional appeal. It's used by a speaker or writer to bring about a feeling in the audience, usually something like anger, happiness, sadness, excitement, etc. And there's nothing wrong with utilizing pathos necessarily, whether it's in a paper or any other you know, uh, medium, but just don't use it solely to manipulate your audience. It should be included with maybe ethos and logos. Okay, here I want to show you a video with pathos. Another whirlwind adventure. Ain't no stopping us now. Woo! We're on the move. Stop, Tucker. I have misjudged you. Join the club. We've got jackets. On my honor. I am obliged to accompany you until you have saved your life, and you have spared me mine. I'm sorry, the position of annoying talking animal has already been taken. Let's go, Shrek! Shrek? Shrek! Oh, come on, donkey, look at him! His wee little boots. You know, how many cats can wear boots? Okay, so... That's a fun little video with uh, the cat. The cat didn't even have to say any words, right? All he had to give was his little sad eye face, and he won Shrek over using pathos. And this one will be easier to remember, maybe, because it's similar to the word logic, and that's probably the root word where we get logic from. So Logos is supporting information through expert sources, facts, statistics and examples. So anytime you see a pie chart or a graph, you're going to be looking at logos. There's a pie chart and there's a graph and here's a YouTube video I want to take you to. Uh, do you guys mind if I start? Um, Penny, that's where I sit. <laughs> No, I sit there. What's the difference? What's the difference? Here we go. 
In the winter, that seed is close enough to the radiator to remain warm and yet not so close as to cause perspiration. In the summer, it's directly in the path of a cross breeze created by opening windows there and there. It faces the television at an angle that is neither direct, thus discouraging conversation, nor so far wide as to create a parallax distortion. I could go on, but I think I've made my point. Okay, so there are some solid facts for you that Sheldon spouts off. I like to show Big Bang Theory, too. It's funny. Okay, so we're going on with key terms. We've got Kairos. I always said Kairos for this, but apparently the correct version is Kairos. And according to Lewitke, the author, Kairos can be defined as the right time to speak or write, um, the advan ad advantageous time, exact or critical time. So it's a window of time during which the action would be the most effective. And you might hear people say, oh, the time is ripe. So think of when you start seeing the majority of political videos, uh, endorsing candidates, propositions, things like that, right? They usually come about, well, I think they're coming um, sooner and sooner before the political um, election days, but when it gets closer to the election day, then you really start seeing them. And or we all know that there's a good time to ask your parents for something and there's a bad time. Uh, this is Kairos, so we start to learn that really quickly, I think, as children, when to ask our parents or guardians if we want something. Okay, uh, there are two more things I want to talk about here, style and tone. Style is the strategies that a writer uses to present his or her voice in writing. Um, here I'm just really talking about writing, but there's all sorts of styles, of course, in music and video and um, all sorts of different mediums. Here in writing, I'm talking about word choice, sentence structure, use of all caps, right? They say that's yelling. Um, when you use metaphors, that's a style. And even a font can be included in the style. I tried to do this whole little slide in that font, and it was really hard to read, and I thought that would be really distracting to a reader. Okay, tone is number eight. This is another key aspect. So the tone is kind of like the attitude. It's the manner of expression that the author uses in the speech. Is it a humorous tone? Is there a sarcastic tone? A serious tone? And all of them can be combined, right? You've probably read an article where they start out humorous and it ends up talking about a very serious topic. Um, so that's sometimes an author will do that little trick. And think of the tone as the mood, atmosphere, or attitude the author or speaker is displaying. Okay, final thoughts. So the two most important things, at least uh, for right now, that you need to remember when communicating with someone are, and also think this is probably going to be a future quiz question, uh, maybe in today's quiz even, the audience and the purpose, which I've already talked about them both a little bit. Purpose, I also consider the context. So the audience, who are you communicating with? This is very important. It really determines how you speak, what you say, the manner that you say it in. Let's say you go to a party one weekend and you are telling your grandmother about it. You might be telling her a little bit of a different version or leaving out a few details than what you tell your best friend who missed the party and went and you went without them. So maybe you got crazy drunk and you're probably not going to say the same thing to your grandmother as you are your best friend. Think about who you're talking to. Okay, and then purpose is the other main aspect. Why are you communicating with someone? What point are you trying to get across? Why are you talking to them or writing to them? So the first example here, I've got someone is telling a story. So the purpose, I would say, is probably to entertain. Uh, maybe judging by the way he's, you know, hunkered over, that he's trying to scare, scare his uh, audience. Maybe he's trying to make him laugh. Maybe he's trying to do all three. Okay, and let's look at this video and see if we can figure out what the purpose is of this video. Oh, shit. Damn. Demon. Oh, he's got to know something. Wesley! Protect the points of gamble. We got this. I took an online class at University of Phoenix on negotiating. I'm going to need a priest and a bullhorn. I got no bullhorn. Does anyone have a bullhorn? Bullhorn, anyone? 
truck. Okay, please, please, please. I need to use your PA system. Okay, let me turn it on. Mr. Beeman. Mr. Don It's Wesley. I know our shot is Wesley. But there's, there's a lot, lot to live for, for in this life. life. A lot, a lot of great things, like uh, soda pop. Big fresh can of soda pop. They do not care. Oh, give me this. Give me this. I know how to talk to him. Listen, we, we all know you're a scumbag, and nobody, nobody cares, cares about, about you. you. That's, but that's, worse than what, that's worse than what I'm saying. I'm not going to lie to you, Don. People down here are starting to murmur that you don't have the balls to do it. I don't care! Yeah. I say you can do it. I mean, I mean, I don't want you to jump and say you have the capability. Oh, look, he's flying! Okay, so, um... Hopefully that wasn't too rough for you guys. I thought that was a funny movie. But the purpose of that video was the two cops were trying to convince the guy um, unsuccessfully not to jump or commit suicide off the side of the building. So that was um, his purpose, or their purpose. Okay, so I just want you guys to be paying attention. The next time you see an ad, a commercial, or a meme, think about whether ethos, pathos, or logos are being used. Um, a lot of times there's a combination of either ethos and pathos or all three or logos and pathos. Most, most advertisements and meme creators don't use uh, just one. And even anything that you're reading, try to think about what, you know, rhetorical device that is being used. So, and also, what is the purpose? So what do you think the purpose is of the author or the ad? Is it to convince, to inform, um, to educate, to tell a story, I guess educate's the same as inform. So just lots of different reasons that we've talked about here. So for instance, uh, this little box I have here, do you think this would be ethos, pathos, or logos? If you think about it, it looks like there's a bunch of stats here and facts, so I'm going to say this is logos. And then no more back pain, doctors recommended. So a doctor should have credibility with you in order to prescribe back pain or even suggest an over-the-counter back pain medication. So that would be ethos. And then lastly, um, Otis here. I'm not sure what the ad is even for, but even without reading it, I would say it's probably going to be using um, pathos or emotion. And that is it. Thanks for joining me on this lecture.